one of the things that most struck me or captured my heart was a sense of um, aloneness or the loneliness of the work that a lot of Burundians uh, seem to express that you know they had been um, working hard but uh, that they they are alone or the, the perception of feeling not really supported or, or surrounded and if for me that actually was really motivational um, because I remember very much what it was like when I went to Rwanda um, and to have listened to the people there um, you know in the early years having felt so abandoned or so alone Burundi has faced historically the same uh, nature of conflict as in Rwanda. So the Hutu and the Tutsi uh, peoples have uh, suffered uh, through a prolonged um, violence, whereas in Rwanda there was a, a genocide which happened on a very uh, quick timescale. Um, the conflict in, Burun in Burundi was much more sustained in terms of duration of time. And consequently, you know, a lost couple of decades, uh, you know, where nothing was moving forward, business endeavors weren't moving forward, the economy wasn't moving forward, socially, you know, politically, health systems, education systems. They had had a relatively strong foundation in terms of education systems, uh, health systems, etc. Uh, then the country really lost traction entirely and um, be, began to suffer through that, you know, through the ethnic division. It is the hungriest country in the world. The Burundian uh, population has a per capita income one-sixth of the average of sub-Saharan Africa. And Sub-Saharan Africa is known to be, you know, at the poor end of the entire global scale. What confirmed our calling uh, to Burundi the most was interactions with Burundian children. I still will never forget the moment when one of the older boys actually initiated uh, with, with a leader there to gather around us in a circle and to pray for us. That was the moment that I think many of us knew that we were going to be engaged in Burundi, whatever it took and whatever it looked like. So we started the conversation as a, as a leadership team in our organization, just asking ourselves, is our mandate really um, just about Rwanda or is it, does it go beyond that? As we came down here and listened to the Burundian voices, we found that absolutely uh, there was a vision being expressed by, by people stating the importance of quality, uh, Christian values-based education. In Burundi's education sector, actually a great deal of students are dropping out of school in grade one. By working on early childhood education, we can actually help to get kids off to a great start and help them to have a basic foundation for their learning in primary schools. Another aspect of work that we'd like to be involved in is uh, technical and vocational education. They are going to need to have um, real skills, real world skills for a vast majority of those learners. They're not all going to go on to university, in fact very few can. And so we need to be able to uh, be engaged in uh, technical and vocational education so as to have pathways for learners which are not simply the formal education route. We have been blessed um, as individuals. I have been blessed. Um, I have a responsibility with that blessing. And in the case of uh, being in Burundi, um, we want to be a catalyst for change in a, much, in a far different environment than is, is in Rwanda.